Hello there everyone, meteorologist Jim Dickey here in the ABC7 Hurricane Center with another edition of Tracking the Tropics. It's Wednesday, August 29th. As of this recording, uh, there are no active storms out there across the Atlantic. It's been a quiet Atlantic. Only two named storms, both tropical storms that formed up and fizzled out in the open northern Atlantic and really brought minimal impacts to anyone whatsoever. So it's been a quiet month. We've enjoyed it. Fortunately, it appears that quiet in the Atlantic is coming to an end. We sort of expect that. When you look at uh, history, climatology of the Atlantic hurricane season over the past 100 years, you plot every single active tropical storm or hurricane that was active throughout various periods of time, you see the most active portion of the hurricane season is clearly from mid-August into early October. And the peak of that most active period in time is September 10th. It's the exact date that Irma made landfall here in Southwest Florida. So we expect September to be a more active month, and that is, is exactly what things are starting to look like as we're about to turn over the calendar into the month of September here this year. Here's a current look out there across the Atlantic. Again, there are no named storms out there right now, but there are a few areas that bear watching, and I have them marked here. Look them up in just a second uh, with dashed lines. Broad areas of low pressure, tropical waves, we call them. One that's moving its way into the Caribbean now. You see some thunderstorm activity flaring up with that. There's a second tropical wave well off to the east of that, moving its way through the deep southern, southeastern tropical Atlantic. There's too much wind shear in that storm's way right now uh, for anything to get going, but something I'll continue to monitor. And then the third little dash line I have there is a complex of thunderstorms that will emerge off the coast of Africa over the next 24 hours. And per the NHC, that has a 50-50 shot of becoming the next tropical cyclone, at least a depression, if not a named storm, as it again moves off the coast of Africa and tracks off to the west. Now, models, two things, quick to develop it, but also just about every model you look at has this curving to the north, has it finding a weakness in the Atlantic Ridge, the area of high pressure that steers things around the Atlantic this time of year. It has it finding a weakness and recurving and hopefully staying out over the Atlantic. So odds are right now, even if this does form, it doesn't come anywhere close to the United States, but it's definitely something that we'll be keeping an eye on going through the weekend. Something that we also have to watch and watch fairly closely is that first tropical wave I talked about. So right now it's moving its way into the Caribbean and you see the yellows, the oranges on your screen. Those are thunderstorms being kicked up by it. So all it is right now is a cluster of clouds and thunderstorms and increased tropical moisture moving its way westward. It's in a hostile environment for any type of tropical system to try to form up. There's some dry air out there, some sinking air, and there's also all kinds of wind shear. We talk about wind shear, what we're showing you is the winds changing with direction and height as you go up in the atmosphere. And for tropical systems to come together, they want calm conditions. They want the winds to not be much of a factor as they try to grow and stack themselves and basically just become thunderstorms that can perpetuate on and on and just keep feeding off that warm, moist air over the ocean. Right now, that wind shear out there, so keeping anything from trying to come together, at least for now and at least for the next couple days. But watch what one forecast model, and of note, one forecast model, you can't just trust one run of one model that you see, but this is what one model has been saying. It's a fairly reliable forecast model, the European. And for a couple runs uh, of this model now, it's been showing that tropical wave moving towards the coast of Florida as we work away into Monday. And even by that time, Labor Day, it's trying to close off. You see that swirling going on there. It's trying to close off an area of low pressure. And in this case, when you see that in this part of the world this time of year, you know what the model is doing is it's trying to spin up a tropical system, perhaps a depression or tropical storm at this point in time. It then brings that budding area of low pressure across the state of Florida. Again, all those bright colors you see, very deep tropical moisture, so could be quite a rainmaker for South Florida as that moves across the state. And then if it were to emerge into the Gulf of Mexico, perhaps some further strengthening with that, we could have a named storm, a strengthening named storm on our hands at this point in time, moving westward across the Gulf. Again. Of course, that's one model. Take a look at a different model. This is the GFS. This is the same period in time, Sunday, Monday, into Tuesday. Where's that little closed off area of low pressure? I don't see it. Yeah, the GFS model at this point in time shows nothing of the like. It has that wave coming into the Gulf of Mexico, and you can sort of see it once we get to the middle of the week. You see how the winds are sort of turning a little bit once we get to Wednesday? 
that's it picking up on that tropical wave. But I think what it's doing is it suppresses the whole thing sort of south, it drags it across the islands, and it keeps it in a pocket of higher wind shear. So at this point in time, it's not uh, spinning something up. So bottom line, at this point, the NHC isn't even monitoring that tropical wave. They're not even showing any percentage chance of development. That's probably going to change over the next 24 hours. But regardless, it's something that I, myself, and our team here at ABC7 will be watching as we work through the holiday weekend into next week. So some takeaways here. Certainly, all of this speaks to the fact that, you know, at least there's some activity that we're watching in the Atlantic. We're definitely starting to see things crank up a bit, and that's what we expect to see this time of year. The first thing we're going to have to watch out for is that wave that tomorrow moves off the coast of Africa, and there's a good chance this becomes our next tropical cyclone, at least a depression, if not a name storm. The next name storm would be Florence. And then, as we work through Labor Day in the next week, we have to continue to watch that tropical wave that at least some models are saying has a chance to spin up into something here, too. So again, it's almost September. We expect to uh, see this. So I suspect I will be doing these videos a lot more often. I will have an update on both of these. Likely, perhaps at least, uh, we'll be talking about a storm uh, budding out there in the deep eastern tropical Atlantic on Friday. That's when I'll be back with our next update. So until then, have a good one.